In this problem, we have a function a little f of y, and we're asked to find the value of c that makes f of y a density function. So for it to be a density function, it has to be non-negative, and that's already satisfied. Uh, here it's 0, so that means it's non-negative. And here y is being squared when y is between 0 and 2, so everything there should be fine as long as c is uh, you know, greater than or equal to 0. So the only other condition that we have to verify is we have to make sure that when we integrate this density function from negative infinity to infinity, we should get 1. This is typically the condition that you have to force in these problems. So basically you have to think about this and just work backwards and force it to be equal to 1. So um, basically whenever it's not between 0 and 2, Right, this integral, well, let's just break it up. Let me just show you. From negative infinity to 0, it's going to be 0, okay, dy. And then we'll go from 0 to 2. And in that case, it's going to be cy squared dy. And then the other case would be from 2 to infinity. And in that case, it's 0 dy. This is a step that people often um, skip. Most people only write this piece here. Uh, the reason is um, this is going to be 0, and this piece on the right here is also going to be 0. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 0, and so is this. Okay, uh, let me just explain why really, really, really briefly. So like, let's say you don't know why it's equal to 0. Well, what you would do to evaluate an integral like this is you would replace the infinity with a variable. I like to use b. And so you put a b here and a 0 here and a zero here, and your dy. When you integrate zero, you get a constant, so this is the limit, as b approaches negative infinity of a constant, and we're going from b to zero. Then the fundamental theorem of calculus, the first one, says that you plug in the zero, so we still have the limit, b is going to negative infinity, and so you get c, you subtract, and then you plug in the b, and so you get c. So you get c minus c, so you have the limit, as b approaches infinity, a negative infinity of 0, and so you get 0. So most people don't, don't go through this. If you look in a book, you won't see this, uh, but it really is happening. So I wanted to write it so you see it. Um, okay, so let's just focus on this. So we have this. You can just start the problem here, right? cy squared dy equal to 1. When you integrate um, y squared, you just get y cubed over 3. You use the power rule. The c is a constant, so it hangs out. So we're just going to get cy cubed over 3, and we're going from 0 to 2. And this here is equal to 1. Good stuff. Then you plug in the 2, so you would get um, c times 2 cubed over 3. Then you subtract, so you get c times 0 cubed over 3, and that's equal to 1. Um, 2 cubed is 8, so we're just going to get uh, 8 thirds c. I'm going to write it like that because it looks better. And this whole piece here will be 0 because of the 0. So minus 0 equals 1. So 8 thirds c is equal to 1. The last thing to do is solve for c. Maybe multiply by the reciprocal. Boom, 3 eighths, 3 eighths. There it is. So c is equal to 3 over 8. And notice it's greater than or equal to 0. So it agrees with what we were talking about at the beginning, 